Well, that was beautiful. I'm Pastor Susie Hutchison. Pastor Bob Miller and I give thanks that you have chosen to spend this fourth Sunday of Advent with us at Plymouth First UMC. And we look forward to seeing you on Thursday, Christmas Eve, to worship with us again. So this is it. We're in the home stretch. Christmas is just around the corner. The air is thick with anticipation. Jesus is coming. The gifts are bought, well, I hope. Did you get a chance to drop off your gift of hats, gloves, and socks at the church this week? Today is the last day to do that for our Advent outreach campaign. Beginning tomorrow, we'll be um, collecting stuff for babies, those new people entering our world who Jesus loves and has sent into our care. So in the next week, Take the opportunity to drop off diapers, wipes, and formula. We're collecting them in the stable set up on the church's front porch. Invite your neighbors and friends who are looking for ways to give this season to participate in this ministry too. They'll be distributed to infants born into under-resourced families. We also have three opportunities to worship online for Christmas Eve. All of our services will be on Zoom. The first is at 2 p.m. and it's designed for children and families, but really anyone would enjoy it. We'll hear the Christmas story, share some traditions from our families, sing Silent Night and celebrate the birth of Jesus. Sarah can give you the link in the chat right now. She also might be able to drop a link in there for our Sunday school. It's a weekly online lesson that includes Bible, life application and crafts. On Christmas Eve, we will also have 5.30 and 7.30 worship. That's PM, we're not getting up that early. The music for the 5.30 service is provided by the Impact Band, whose music you've seen in the worship services. And the music for the 7.30 is traditional. It has been recorded by our choir and our orchestra. The links for those services are the same as this one, pfumc.org slash worship now. In addition, you might wanna know that 50% of the offering from our Christmas Eve worship will be going to the Methodist Children's Home of Detroit. It's a facility founded in the last pandemic in response to the Spanish flu and the increased number of orphans as a result of it. It, will still, it still serves kids who are in foster care, whose parents are unable to care for them. So come to Christmas Eve worship and make a difference in the lives of the children they serve. Now we worship in song, in prayer, and in proclamation of the word. We worship in acts of service and in acts of giving. So today I invite you to this first act of worship, the offering of gifts to the work of God through the ministries of Plymouth First UMC. The many ways you can give are outlined in this graphic. You can give via text message. You can give through the app or the web page. It's also an option to give via check or electronic transfer. We're called to come together as a community united by our faith in Jesus Christ. So let us take a second and offer each other a sign of peace. Go to the chat. If you don't know how to do that, take your mouse to the bottom of your screen. A few buttons will appear. If they don't, go to the more buttons and click that and it will pop up and it will say chat. Click on that chat button and a window is going to pop up right in front of you and just type in there, peace be with you. I'll give you a minute. Now, now that we've made peace with our brothers and our sisters, let us pray. You spoke, Lord, and light penetrated the darkness. A good light, a strong light, a perfect light. When we strayed hiding in the darkness rather than basking in the, sun, in the light, you sent your prophets to call us back call us back to the light. Yet we persist in our stubbornness and our fear. So, so you send your son. This holy sun is the light of the world shining in the darkness. No darkness, no pain, no fear, no doubt, not even death can overcome that light. So Lord, we give you thanks. Thanks for gifting us with that light. Now you ask us to be your light in the continuing darkness. Oftentimes we are nothing but a small, fragile, flickering light. But at other times we cast a bright, strong beam of light. Help us today and into this coming week to let your light shine through us in our words and in our actions. Amen.
Good morning. I'm Pastor Bob Miller, and let me join in welcoming you on this fourth Sunday in Advent worship service, which, which means we're only days away from Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. It's coming fast. Pastor, uh, Pastor Susie, uh, a moment ago, alluded to, um, to our Christmas shopping, but, but this year is not a typical Christmas shopping year, is it? It's just not the same as we're used to. But then again, you can say that this whole year is not the same as we're used to, right? It's like there's a, a dark cloud that's rolled over regular routines, over our expectations, over our typical activities. And for many, that dark cloud has impacted our hopes and dreams. This year, it seems like we have found ourselves in that metaphorical darkness, that comes up in conversation, that we read about in poetry, that we even find in scripture. And it's, pretty, it's a pretty descriptive metaphor, isn't it? Because its literal parallels can strike so closely to life experience. I mean, when you are in darkness, you cannot see where you're going. You can't see obstacles before you. It's hard, if not impossible, to avoid bumping into those obstacles. And worse yet, there's unwanted things that can be hiding in the dark. 
And when we find ourselves in such metaphorical darkness, we long for light. True story. Just the other day, I entered into a room downstairs here at the church. The lights were off, and I couldn't find the light switch on the wall. But I could kind of see, at least while standing in the doorway. But as I continued into the room, it got darker and darker to the point where I could not see where I was going. Now, I, I knew there was, a, there was definitely a light switch on the other side of the room. So I started slowly over in that direction. But wouldn't you know, with my very next step, my shin made contact with the corner of a table that I couldn't see. My very next step got tangled up in some legs of a chair. Clearly, this wasn't working. I, I wasn't even sure what direction I was heading at that point. I needed light, and in the worst way. My only option was to turn around and slowly walk back to the light from which I originally came. I can only imagine what that might have looked like on some kind of night vision video recording. Probably some pretty good entertainment value. But don't we sometimes find ourselves in virtually that exact same situation in life? Times when we seem to be feeling our way around, not really sure where we might be heading, not really sure what obstacles may be right in front of us that we are not really seeing, trying hard to not bump into something, especially something that could leave some kind of permanent mark to our well-being, to our bodies, to our emotions, to our spirits. That's when we realize just how much we long for light, light that illuminates the paths before us, that identifies the obstacles and how to avoid bumping into them, that identifies the traps and how to avoid falling into them. And that's why we want and need it to be true light, light that we can count on to not mislead us, light that is genuinely interested in, in, in our best interest and not hidden agendas, light that won't leave us in a lurch, getting us partway there, only to leave us stranded, vulnerable to what may be lurking in the darkness but also light that has the goods and the integrity to get us all the way home. Light that wants to be there for us. I think about such light and I imagine God from God's timeless vantage point, looking upon humanity and, and seeing God's people wandering in such proverbial metaphorical darkness and wanting for those people to walk in true light, wanting those people to recognize that the true light is uh, what the true light is and embrace that true light. And I imagine God asking, well, the God self, how do I most effectively show my people that I am a light? Hear these words from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Follow along as I read aloud. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light but the whole world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, not from human desire or passion, 
but born from God. The word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Now, the word, word, that we encounter throughout this entire passage comes from the Greek word logos. And while it's more common use at that time meant speaking or, or a message, it's more, it, it more fundamentally spoke to the reasoning of something. It's actually the origin of our present English word logic. It references the order, the, the structure, the rationality of the world. And this word, as we read in this passage, has been since the very beginning, since the beginning of all time and space. And it was with God, and it was God. In other words, the word, as the logos of God, is speaking to the order, structure, rationality, the, the reasoning or thinking of God. The word is nothing less than the very essence of God. And, and what came into being through this very essence of God was life. And what's more, that life was the light for all people. God revealed the very essence of the God self, the thinking, the reasoning, the motivation of God to God's people to the world as light to a people living in darkness. Again, somewhat metaphorical language, but striking parallels. And the word became flesh and made his home among us. And we know just who this word is. Now, if we were together in person, I would have you call out the name of that who. But if you can get to your chat box, go ahead and, and chat it out now. Who, who is the light? I could sit here and watch that all day. Yes, it's, it, it's Jesus. Jesus, fully human, in the flesh is the full revelation of God. You want to know what, what really motivates God? You want to know what God really thinks about? You want to know where, where God's priorities are? You want to know what actions or behaviors God really thinks are important? Look at, study, embrace, and center your life around Jesus. Our sermon series during this year's Advent season has been an exploration for how each of the four gospel Advent narratives inform us about Jesus. In Matthew, we saw how Jesus was fully human, proving to us that God knows what it is like to live in the current human condition and that our humanity is not a restriction to God's redemption. Then Mark showed us how Jesus by definition, is counter to this world's present fallen culture and how Jesus offers the alternative to the brokenness in this world. Last week, Luke's account related how Jesus was the personification the, of true humility, God's definition of humbleness, if you will, a humbleness that leads to thankfulness and trust and strength and hope. And today, John tells us how Jesus was and is the very revelation of God, offered in a way that we can not only better understand, but demonstrates that our pathway to salvation as God's people is real and available to each of us. You see, that is why knowing that Jesus is the very revelation of God is so important to us. First off, it demonstrates that God not only knows, but is tangibly present with us. And on that you can count on, no matter what the world may try to convince you of otherwise. 
And second is what we learn from Jesus. That is what God's love in action looks like, what it results in and that God wants to share eternity with us and promises to make that happen if we really want. And what's more, that God has the power and faithfulness to make good on that promise. Jesus is God manifested in the flesh, whose words and deeds are those of God. Jesus reflects the very nature of God, embodying the ultimate expression of God's covenant faithfulness and unmerited favor toward the world, even the world that rejected him. Jesus, the Logos, who has come to, to earth in the flesh, is the power of God that created the world and the reason of God that sustains it. Jesus is none other than God's creative, life-giving, light-giving word. My dear friends, I invite you to pray with me. Let us pray. Oh, holy God of eternity, your faithfulness endures from age to age, and we pray knowing that you will not forsake us. You have come to us as a child born of Mary, full of promise and grace, revealing forevermore the depth of your wisdom and the wonder of your salvation. Through Christ, we learn of your will, committing our lives and giving thanks for all your manifold gifts. We pray that by your compassion, you will sustain the lonely, give hope to the despairing, and fill the faint-hearted with courage. Help us to, to comfort, encourage, and strengthen others as we minister in Christ's name. Fill us with the vision of the prophet Isaiah, who proclaimed release to the captive, liberty to the oppressed, and good news to the poor. May your sending of the Prince of Peace be an incentive to us and all people who yearn for peace. Let your wisdom sustain all who worship you, providing counsel and guidance as we grow and continually mature in faith. Broaden our vision to behold how we may serve you more obediently amid the complexity of our world. Keep us attuned to your enduring revelation and to your salvation, which comes to us in Jesus. We give thanks for Jesus Christ and pray that we might be worthy to be called his disciples in all that we do. For it is in his name we pray. Amen. In four days, we will come back together again to re-remember the awesome gift bestowed upon us in the birth of Jesus the Christ. We will retell that story that never gets old of of Mary and Joseph, the manger, the shepherds in the fields, the angelic host, and the birth of Emmanuel, God with us. And we will again receive the prophecy of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. My good friends, May this Advent season of 2020, even with everything that has and is going on, deepen your desire to get to know Jesus even better, that you may see with your own eyes and feel with your own heart the very essence of the one true living God who loves you beyond description as revealed by the one true Savior of the world, Jesus the Christ. May it be so. Amen.
What a blessing. What a blessing to be in worship with you all today as we remember and celebrate the greatest blessing that the world has ever received, a savior revealed in flesh and bones. We give thanks with the gifts for, for those gifts that our savior has given to us, our time, our talents, and our treasures. If you have not yet made an offering as an act of worship today, you can go to pfumc.org. That's P Plymouth First United Methodist Church, pfumc.org slash giving and do it at any time. Following today's closing blessing, the host will give you the option to turn on your video and or your audio. They can't do it for you, so you're gonna have to click to do that and then join us in a virtual coffee hour. I look forward to seeing you there. And so now my good friends, as you, as you go on from your week, as you go from this worship service and you work your way towards Christmas, may you be strengthened in the knowledge that Jesus is the Christ. And, and may, well, we'll start that over again because I see I had a button I need to press here. May you be strengthened in the knowledge that Jesus is the Christ. May you be a reflection of God's love and grace in all you say and do. May you love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May God's blessing be upon you all, and may the peace of Christ go with you now and forevermore. May it be so. Amen. <laughs>